and welcome to Myth Monsters. My name is Erin and I'll be your host for these little snack bite-sized podcasts on folklore and mythical monsters from around the world. These podcasts focus on the actual cryptids, folklore and mythic monsters from global mythology, rather than focusing on the full stories of heroes and their big adventures. I'll also be dropping in some references that they have to recent culture, and we can see these represented in modern day content, so that you can learn more and get as obsessed as I am about these absolute legends of the mythological world. First note is that I have a horrendous sinus infection, so I sound really rubbish. I apologise about the tone of my voice and generally how gross I sound. I do severely apologise, I'm trying to get through it. But we're heading back to cryptozoology again this week for the first time in a little while. It's a really nice change from the super traditional myth monsters that we usually cover as well. Especially as this monster is so unbelievably bizarre and unknown within the cryptid world too. Yes, this week we are covering the horrifying El Quiero from South American folklore. You probably don't know this one, but I really hope you're in for a wild ride today because this one is weird. El Quiero is described as a living cow, goat or sheep hide that lives in the rivers and lakes of Chile and Argentina in South America. Yes, you heard me correctly, a living cow hide. This monster would have a very large flat body with cow-like spots and would float along the surface of the water with the current, armed with a long whip-like tail. It has four eyes on stalks like snails protruding from its head, a long proboscis that could be extended, and the edges of this big skin body are covered in razor-sharp claws. It varies in length between 2 to 5 feet across and weighs about 65 pounds, but it does only live in fresh water, so we have got that. Apparently, El Quiero hunts exclusively in the Chilean glacial Lake Lacar in the Andes Mountains, so unless you're here, I think you're okay, just as a heads up there, but I feel now like no freshwater lake is safe, so I might not be right there. The Quiero eats humans or really anything that ventures into its path, and they would float past quite unsuspectingly, then enclose their prey in their sharp claws like a big duvet, sucking out their blood and organs through their proboscis. They would then release the drained body out to sea for other creatures to finish off. Then they would, once done with their meal, make their way to a solitary beach and bask in the sunshine whilst it digests its dinner peacefully. Its favourite prey was of course children, as they were nice and easy to catch and small enough to fully engulf in the folds of their body. That sounds really, really gross. So please Erin, say we can kill it in some way. Yes, thankfully there is a way. You could kill a cuero by throwing a Kisco cactus into the water where it lives, and the dumb skin would then try and eat it and then impale itself on the barbs of the cactus bleeding to death. There is apparently a story of a young hero who saves his town by tying cactuses to his hands and legs and then entering the waterfall El Quiero to eat. So obviously you can imagine he was pretty brave and the Quiero obviously didn't survive the ordeal. Now on to etymology. The literal translation for El Quiero is the hide or the leather, which is a little bit boring but it is also sometimes known as manta, which translates into mantle or cloak as well. However, the history behind this is actually really cool. The monster is technically a Mapuche monster, and I'll get more into that in a minute, so don't worry, but the word for them in Mapuche is trelkueve hukuve, which means skin hukuve. This is where it gets really interesting. Hukuve is the Mapuche term for a demon or spirit from the word wekufe, meaning demon or outside being. We'll definitely be covering more hekuve in the future, so do get used to this term. Now, Erin, I swear you said this was a Chilean and Argentinian monster. Yeah, I wasn't wrong, I certainly wasn't lying to you. However, as this is a Mapuche monster from Mapuche mythology, that is specifically to the south central region of Chile and the southwestern region of Argentina. So, as much as they are Mapuche, they are also Chilean, Argentinian based on location. 
It's a really ancient culture, but 80% of the indigenous people in Chile are still Mapuche. This amazing native culture unfortunately became lesser after the Spanish colonization of South America, but thankfully some remained and still remain to this day, so this is really nice. This is actually where most of the monsters from these regions originate from, so if we do cover any more Chilean or Argentinian monsters, they are most likely going to be Mapuche in origin, but I'll refer to them by their locational names, I suppose. However, because of this, we're not entirely sure on when El Cuero made its way into folklore. However, I can tell you that the Mapuche culture existed in Chile and Argentina from 600 BC. So this monster could potentially go back this far. And this also makes them rivals to the Incas, which is just so wild to think historically about this area and this period in history. Anyway, the Mapuche originally believed that El Cuero was a type of Hakuve, rather than an animal in its own right. However, it is sometimes considered that the Hakuve possesses a normal creature, such as a very common stingray in these areas, so it could have legitimately just been a stingray, to be completely fair, just one possessed by a demon. In terms of sightings, there have been loads throughout history, and even recently. The two main stories though that I'm going to tell you are associated with this monster. We have one that is of a woman washing her clothes in a lake whilst her baby was asleep nearby. Then El Cuero jumped out of the water, caught the baby like a big fishing net, dragged it into the water to its death. Apparently all of this happened in a few seconds, so we can see how fast this monster acts from this one too. There's also a really famous Chilean folktale about this. It goes that a magical cow, yep, legit magical cow, told its owner called Joaquin, great name, to kill it and skin it. Don't know why, but anyway, Joaquin, being a solid fella, did exactly that, and the cowhide produced was magically alive in its own special way, and Joaquin used it as a boat. Gross. Even worse, he kept the cow's eyes in his pockets and they had the magic power to see through anything he needed. Which, again, a bit bizarre, but that's the story. When he finished surfing around, Joaquin collected all of the carcass and placed them on a pyre to rest the cow peacefully. When he had placed all of the bits on there, the cow miraculously jumped back to life and was just a normal cow again and then it wandered off as if nothing had ever happened. It's such a wild story. In terms of real life comparisons though, very obviously we have stingrays, which massively fit the MO for this monster with their size and their looks. Although again, we know that stingrays eat clams, shrimp, small fish, mollusks, specifically creatures that tend to be smaller than them. So we know that humans aren't really part of the menu. We do also have the gross nudie branches, which are really gross undersea mollusks that look so much like a monster, it's a little bit worrying. These big old slug boys also don't eat anything bigger than themselves. They tend to eat coral and plankton, but they really do look like our monster of the week. They are horrifying. I don't recommend looking them up. There's also a sea turtle called Matamata, which sometimes is mistaken for El Cuero. They're very flat-shelled turtles, and they're extremely aggressive, but again, they're a little bit too small for our monster. Lastly though, the most crazy idea is that they're an evolved sea scorpion, which were around 500 to 250 million years ago, if you can actually believe that. There's one species in particular, Tagotus buffalonius, and they were up to 9 feet in length, and was apparently the largest known arthropod. Sea scorpions were generally quite flat and very wide, so it might be a legitimate older mistaken identity case here. There are also some similar cryptids in the same area that we have been mistaken for this monster, such as the Heke Heke, which is a giant stingray monster, or the Nugaravili, which is a fox serpent creature. They both live around the same areas of Chile and Argentina and apparently are constantly mistaken for this monster. Moving on very nicely to modern media though, this was a particularly tricky one this week, I must say. Now, Cuero themselves are not in modern media, 
So I'm going to take the wonderful trope of deadly stingrays for this one for you, so you can find similar content based off of this. For art, considering this is considered a cryptid rather than a mythological monster itself, you probably know what I'm going to say to you. I would really recommend looking up some independent art for this one. Some of them are horrifying, the art I've used this week is pretty gross, but the rest of the drawings and graphic art are just horrible. I don't... I mean, I do recommend looking them up, but they are gross. In movies, we have a few like Aquaman, Detective D, The Sea Bat, Little Mermaid 2, Little Nemo, Adventures in Slumberland, and Captain Nemo and the Underwater City. For TV, we have Justice League, The Little Mermaid, SpongeBob SquarePants, Super Jail, The Ultraman, Doctor Who, River Monsters, Ultra Q, Denji Sentai Mega Ranger, and One Piece. You'll notice I have mentioned DC comic superheroes here, and that's Aquaman. Aquaman's arch nemesis in the water is Black Manta, who has a black suit with laser beams coming out of his eye holes. He doesn't really have any powers based on his name bar the inspiration behind his aquatic based villainy. He's just really smart at creating gadgets to make his suit better in the water and went with a stingray kind of mantra. Haha, <laughs> mantra. But anyway, in video games, we have ones such as Demon Souls, Darius, Super Mario Sunshine, Shin Megami Tensei, Mega Man 4. Monster Eye, Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, and Bayonetta 2. And lastly, my book recommendation this week is Chasing American Monsters, Over 250 Creatures, Cryptids, and Hairy Beasts by Jason Offutt, which not only has US monsters, but also covers our lovely South American ones too. So if you want to find out more about these, would really recommend this book. Now it's time for do I think they existed? I'm really sorry to sing that, it's just not something I can do this week. I fully believe that stingrays exist. Uh, I've seen them. I've had a stingray massage when I was last in the Dominican Republic when I was 15. And I know that sounds awful. I promise it was back when I was a child. I, I did not know that it was animal cruelty at the time. I have touched numerous ones at aquariums as well. We all know they're deadly. I'm not ready to talk about Steve Irwin just yet, I'm still heartbroken, but I really don't see the Quero being something that lives to this day, you know? I can totally see how people could mistake stingrays for these monsters, I really can, but stingrays do not eat people. Although their very rare victims can also potentially drown and never be seen again, sure, although I suppose the skin of stingrays can also feel like wet cowhide, and they are kind of spotty with their camouflage, so I really do get the mistaken identity thing, but to think they have teeth and eye stalks and claws? Wild concept. In fact, if you lift up a stingray, they looked really happy. They have little mouths, and if you lift them out of the water, they do this little bleh spit with water. Obviously, they are aquatic creatures, so, so don't do this. I will say my stingray massage, again, was a very long time ago, and I would not do this again for animal rights reasons. Do not do this. Thank you. When I showed the picture of this to my younger brother, though, he just said, and I quote, it looks like a blanket. I'm not sure what blankets he's seen, but it did really make me chuckle, so I thought I'd share that. But what do you think? Did El Cuero own the earth? Let me know on Twitter, I would love to hear what you think. What a weird creature to focus on this week. It's certainly a new one in my books, one that I didn't know anything about, and is slowly becoming more and more my favourite as I learn more about it. Although I will say, I know I didn't want to speak about this, but I've not looked at stingrays the same since my childhood hero Steve Irwin passed away, because damn that stingray and I will never forgive it. I will never forgive them as a creature for Steve Irwin. Just saying. But speaking of Down Under and, I guess, Oceana, next week we are heading down to New Zealand for the first time ever. We're going to be looking at technically really a weird monster. We're going to be looking at a set of witches with a very horrible backstory, kind of goes into ghost stories, so it's definitely a different one. We are looking at the creepy three witches of Auckland next week, so come with your broomsticks and wands ready next Thursday. 
For now, thank you so much for listening, and I'm so sorry I've put you through 15 minutes of my terrible voice. It has always been an absolute pleasure. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give it a rating on the service you are listening on. I've got the Twitter for any questions or suggestions on what monsters to cover next, and I'd really love to hear from you. The social media handles for TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram are Myth Monsters Podcast, and the Twitter is Myth Monsters Pod. But all of our content can always be found at mythmonsters.co.uk, and you can find us on Good Pods and Patreon if you want to help me fund the podcast too. Just want to say, anyone who came down to the podcast show, it was a real honour to be able to chat to some of you. I got to panel and sit there and talk to new podcasters and kind of coach them. So I just want to say anyone who saw me and came and spoke to me, it was really lovely to meet you. And I thoroughly look forward to hearing all your content. And yeah, if anyone else wants to ping me about new podcast ideas, please feel free. But come join the fun, share this with your pals. They might love me as much as you do. But for now, stay spooky and I'll see you later, babes. <laughs>